Welcome to the second week of our small group uh, meetings and uh, it's so good to have you join us on our identity series in this churchwide campaign. We uh, are having a message on the Sundays and uh, in the weeks we're discussing that a bit further and the Sunday message was all about us being a child of God and so in this meeting in this video we're going to focus on how can I grow in my relationship with my father and uh, the theme of this week is my place in the family. You and I are children of the Father, just like Christ is a son of his Father. We are welcomed into the same family. Here's a reminder of some of the words even that were shared last week to help us and to, to get us thinking a whole lot more about our identity in Christ. And it says this, you were chosen before the world began. You are loved more than you will ever know. You have been forgiven of everything you've ever done wrong. You are completely accepted by the one who made you. You have been adopted into a royal family. You have been blessed beyond belief with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And your heavenly father takes great delight in you. Now, there's some wonderful passages of scripture uh, in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 1 of Ephesians. And I want to highlight three verses from the book of Ephesians. And uh, in this one chapter alone, it says this in verse 2, verse 3, and verse 17. And uh, you can fill in the missing words as we go. It says, Grace and peace to you, as Paul's writing to the Ephesians, grace and peace to you from God our Father. And that's the word there. Then it says, Praise be to the God and Father. Write that in again of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And then once again, in verse 17, it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the, same, uh, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. It's with great intention and importance that we're reminded of this on three occasions where it speaks about God as our Father, our Father, our Father, our glorious Father. And the key to knowing our place in the family is knowing Him. And the more we get to know Him as Father, the more we realize who we are as His children. And the whole Trinity is involved in that last verse there, where it says that through the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of wisdom and revelation has come and the glorious Father is made known to us. And so... Our all-powerful Father, this is what He's like. As we look at other passages of Scripture where it talks about the Father, this is what it says about Him. Our Father is firstly all-powerful. He is all-powerful. He's not weak. He's not blind. His arm is not too short to reach out and to save. He is incredibly powerful. He's not like some idol or some God by the invention of man. He is a wonderful, powerful God who created the heavens and the earth saves us through his power that exerted to raise Christ from the dead. And in the end, he will accomplish all his purposes and all his plans by the great power that he has. And he's a good, powerful father. The second thing is, he's the ruler of the world. Our father is king. And this is 1 Timothy 1 verse 17, the ruler of the world. And I tell you, in times like this, when we see so many things, the wars and rumors of wars and troubles and, and so much that's going on within creation and within politics and, and just within this world that we live in, it's very comforting to know that our heavenly father is the ruler and he's still in charge and he still has control of everything that is happening right now. Even though men and women can make their own decisions and have got free will to do things, God is still the ruler and he's in control. Number three, he's a perfect father and that's from Matthew 5 verse 48. Our, our human fathers are not perfect and this is a reality. We, we uh, sometimes as a result of the imperfections of our fathers we put up these defenses and we have kind of uh, reactions or responses to the things that our fathers have done and from their imperfections sometimes we kind of juxtapose these back onto God and we think for some reason that God might be angry at, at, at us like a heavenly father might have been angry at us or there are a number of things that we feel he doesn't care about us he's distant because maybe in so many people's experiences they had a distant relationship with the father and they feel like God is distant in that way but God is perfect in every way he's not like our earthly fathers he's perfect and he's good all the time 
That's number four. He's good. Psalm 105. He's in, 100 verse 5. He's infinitely good. He's, he's better infinitely than any good that is in this world. Anything beautiful, anything amazing, anything glorious comes from the most beautiful, amazing, glorious, good Father that we have. And number five, one John tells us that he is love. You know, it's interesting. It doesn't just say that God is loving. The Bible does say that God is loving. But this is where John says something a little bit deeper. His identity is love. It says God is love. Love just isn't an abstract feeling or a description. Love is a person. And God is that person. And so when we come to understand him and know him as he really is, we start to find that he's all powerful. He's a good ruler. He's perfect, very good and loving. And love is his identity that he shows himself. So he is also, and this is so important, underline this missing word. He is my father. This is so, so incredible. He wants me to know him better. And he wants to invite me into a relationship with him. And so he is my father. You know, um, every one of us have got insecurities and, and we long for security and acceptance and strength and we need the love that we can receive from our Father. I want to say this about my earthly dad. I remember the day that uh, he said to me, Brad, you come into church tomorrow. And on that day, I got radically saved. And I'm so grateful that my dad, in that moment, he knew what was the most necessary thing for me. And it wasn't just that I know my dad better, but that I know my heavenly father. And I started to weep because of the love that God the Father gave me and showed me initially. No matter what I'd said and no matter what I'd done and no matter where I'd been, this father showed his great love for me. And so my earthly dad pointed me to a heavenly dad. And this delighted my, my father's father, my grandfather. When he heard that I got saved, that I'd given my heart to Jesus at 21, he was so delighted. He immediately uh, packaged a Bible that he had and he sent it to me so that I could get to know the father even better. And so my earthly father, my, my grandfather, were pointing towards the father. And then when I met Sharissa, and the first time I ever sat down with, with Patrick and I'd said to him, I'm really interested in your daughter and I want to marry her. My intentions are pure and my intentions are for the purposes of God for, for us and, and for her. He was delighted that I, would, that I would come and approach him in that way. But I learned so many things about the Heavenly Father from my dad, from my grandpa, and then from Sharissa's dad, um, Patrick. And uh, all of these in some way pointed to my Father in heaven. And while my dad and my grandpa and Sharice's dad were imperfect in this life, I started to find a perfect relationship with a perfect God who's a father. And that has been the most wonderful thing for me uh, in my life. And you can have it in the same way. You'll never know. <laughs> you'll never know that he is all you need until he is all you have. And it's such an incredible, powerful relationship that it changes everything. And so how do I get to know my father better? And so the five points that we have here, spend time, just fill in the missing word there, spend time with him daily, if possible. He, Jesus, went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was alone. This is Matthew 14, verse 23. You can see it in the life of Jesus. I mean, uh, E.M. Bounds had this quote where he said, why is it that Jesus, who needed to pray so little, prayed so much, and we who need to pray so much, pray so little? You see, there's something that Jesus understood, that he, the source of all his compassion, of his uh, strength when it came to conflict, of anything that he needed to do to be of benefit to people or when he needed to face and resist anything that was negative that was coming his way. His source in all of that was the relationship that he had with his father. And the very first thing that we see on the scene when Jesus is baptized in the Jordan River, he comes up out of the water, the heavens open, and it's the father who speaks down from above and said, this is my son who I love and I'm pleased with him. And I tell you, if those words echoing in Jesus' ears was enough to carry him through the temptations in the desert, carry him through when everybody was praising him for the miracles, and then carry him through the persecutions when people were saying that, that this man is evil and they called him of the devil, all of those things through to the point where he was on a cross and ultimately his resurrection. You see, the source of Jesus' life 
was re his relationship with his father. And that's what Jesus came to show us. And his relationship with his father, he showed us time and time again. He would draw aside and just be with his dad. And I think this is so important for us. So for you and I, if Jesus needed it, you and I need it, if not more. And so when we can and we should make time to spend daily time with our father. Uh, secondly, we read his written word. The word of God is powerful. The Psalm 19 verse 10 says this, says this, Your words are more precious than gold, they are, uh, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. And I tell you, you and I get, need to get to the point where we realize that a diet that is coming from the word of God is so good and so healthy for us and really does taste sweet. If I think of my children, um, there were times uh, for each one of them, Ethan and Bethany, really didn't have a problem with eating anything that Charissa um, made, whether it was meat or vegetables or sweet things. Uh, but Carter was very picky. Initially, just wouldn't eat anything. And, and we had to try and find the things that um, he liked in order just to feed him. And uh, today, though, <laughs> he could walk into the fridge and take a green pepper and eat it like he's eating an apple. And uh, something in there has just given him this, this delight and he's found something good and something and we, healthy about it. And we, we're delighted that it's not just the chocolates and the sweets, but that he actually likes eating a green pepper. Evan, on the other hand, we have to convince him with all kinds of stories to get him to have the good stuff, <laughs> the, the important healthy stuff. But here's the reality. You and I need a diet of the written word in our lives and it's good for us. And the more that we understand it, of the 66 books of the Bible written over a couple of thousand of years, it all is there to reveal him and to make him known to us. And so as we study the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, keep an ear and an eye and a heart open to the Father right the way through who's got this incredible plan and purpose to reveal himself to you and to I. He's not kept himself in the dark. If anybody's looking for him, seeking him, he's delighted to reveal himself to you. And so in light of that, number three is talk to him. It's so important that you, you make the relationship that you can have with the father a reality by speaking to him. Uh, sometimes I speak to him in the, cars, in the car while I'm driving and it's, it's um, okay when people look across at you. They think you're just kind of on your Bluetooth device speaking on your phone. But there's times of just speaking to the Father. Jesus teaches us to pray in Matthew 6, verse 9 and 10 says, Say this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it's not so much about saying the words uh, exactly as they're written. It's about the heart and the relationship that we can have. So speaking to our Father, exalting Him for His glorious name, uh, speaking to him about his kingdom and how his kingdom is a kingdom of joy and peace and righteousness and we need that and so we we long for that and we ask him to pour that out because that's what he brings and that his will would be done and his will is good on this earth where we need it right now and that starts in a relationship with the father it's really heaven on earth when we're having a relationship with him number four is listen to his voice you see we grow closer by listening. Somebody once said, it's interesting that we have one mouth and two ears. You see, we should be listening double as much as we're speaking. A lot of the times our, our mouths and our, our words can get us in trouble. And sometimes we treat God like the one that just needs to hear us all the time. We have a shopping list or, or a, a number of things that we want fixed and we want changed and we just speak to him in that manner. But there's such an important aspect of understanding his heart in understanding how we speak to him by listening how he speaks to us and when we listen to him it's incredible there's so many ways that God speaks to us in Deuteronomy 30 verse 20 it says that you may love the Lord your God listen and this and uh, uh, you know uh, fill in the missing word there listen to his voice and hold fast to him you see we can hear his voice he's going to speak through the word he can speak through prophetic confirmations. We believe in the gift of prophecy today that God uses encouragements and strengthening and, and moments to highlight aspects that He's already revealed to us through the Word, that He's already saying to us in our hearts. 
uh, those confirmations that can come from the prophetic are very powerful and very helpful to us. There's that inner voice when we're just sensing that he's leading us and that he's guiding us. These are, these are the wonderful benefits of knowing that he speaks to his children and he speaks within our consciences sometimes. Don't do that. Do that. And he's leading us. Um, there's very often wise counsel that comes to us through others and we can hear God speaking when people are speaking to us uh, on behalf of God people who are ambassadors for God representatives of God when they say things it can be God using those words to speak right to our hearts on numerous occasions people have spoken into my life and I felt like it was God speaking through them to challenge areas of my life uh, the provision of God can be a way that he speaks sometimes um, there can be doors and circumstances that are open. That, that's God speaking and showing us where he wants us to go. And then there's the aspect of the peace of God that reigns in our lives as we listen to him. And I'll tell you, that is probably, uh, you know, it's, it's, it can't be valued with any money or anything in the world. The peace that we get from hearing him speak is an incredible thing. And so we need to grow in our hearing and listening and allow the confirmations of what God's saying to come through in these various ways. And we start to get confidence in what he's saying and in his voice. The fifth thing is to connect with his family. You see, God has spoken to many of his children for many years. And very often there are those children in the family of God that have developed an incredible keen sensitivity to the voice of God. And for us to be in a body and in the family and connected to the family of God is so important because it's very often in that place, just as I mentioned earlier, that we hear his voice speaking to us, uh, being connected to the family. We don't say, we love you, Father, but we want nothing to do with your children. We love you, Father, but your sons and daughters, we don't want anything to do with them. You see, when you love the Father, you love who the Father loves. When you love the Father, you love what the Father loves. And in that sense, we can grow in our understanding of the Father when we see, wow, I tell you, you, you need the testimony that I have of a father speaking in my life. But I need the testimony that you have of the father speaking in your life. Because we have the same father. And when he's speaking to you, it encourages me and gives me a, a testimony that I can carry in areas of similar circumstance. And the same goes that when he's done things amazingly in my life, I want to share those so that you can hear and listen. Because maybe God's speaking to you about something that he's done for me. And he wants to encourage you in the same light. And so when we realize that he's got a family that he loves and that he's speaking into, it's wonderful to keep our ears and our hearts opened in those places for God to keep speaking to us. You see, Acts 2 verse 42 says, they devoted themselves to fellowship. Why? Because of the voice of God in that fellowship. That's the one thing that keeps us together. His voice, the Father's voice, is among us. And when his voice is among us, we hear him speak. And it's a powerful thing. And so for some of us, the relationship with God is maybe stagnated. And maybe there's no desire in your heart to be with the family of God. I want to pray today that you would make this reality and this relationship a reality by getting connected again. And yes, let him speak to you personally through all the ways that we've spoken about now. But come back to the place where you realize that he loves you. He loves his children and he wants to speak to you in a mighty way. Can I pray for us? Lord, I want to thank you for your spirit that has been poured out on your family. And I want to thank you, Holy Spirit, that you inside of us cause us to live a new life. As new creations, your spirit inside of us resonates and says this one thing within us, that I am a child of God. So Holy Spirit, I pray for every single person listening that would hear you on the inside, reminding and resonating in their hearts that they are children of God and that they can say, Abba Father, Abba Father, you are mine and I am yours. And Lord, I pray that as we draw closer to you, we'd find that you've already drawn closer to us as your children in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.